Hard Times Closes. Over 30 years of glorious billiard history has come to an end. Hard Times Billiards was Southern California's hardcore pool player's headquarters. No other pool hall came close to the history and true, pure love of billiards. They had no alcohol, no fancy sports TVs. What did they have? They had hardcore tables, snooker tables, heated karam tables, and 25 tough gold crown 9-foot tables, and 10 of them were set impossibly tight for the best players in the world to compete on, complete with arena seating. That's right, one went there to see the best players, like in any other major sports arena. Hard Times was voted the best pool room in America by Billiards Digest in 1996. New York had Amsterdam Billiards, California had Hard Times first opened by the Marcoulis family and subsequently sold to the Thomason family. Then lastly, to Eddie. Hard Times served pocket billiards for several generations. The best players came here not only from Los Angeles, not only from the state. No, they came from all over the world. Where else is this to happen? Every day, up-and-coming players would come from all over to lose to the best in tournaments or to play in ridiculously high-stake money games. Hard Times was a pro player's top college. This pro college turned out future billiard stars and billiard pros like Oscar Dominguez, who now owns and runs the Sister Hard Times Sacramento, now the last temple of billiards left in California. New York gave us the likes of Jeanette Lee, and Hard Times gave us Mary Avina. POV Pool Media was also born at Hard Times. A temple of pool gave us an endless list of other great and notable but lesser known players, such as Andy Chen, Box Patterson, Jay Helford, June Almoit. Jenny Lee, Dave Hemma, Melissa Herndon, Brooke Thomason, Ken Thomason, Jerry Matchin, Robin Bell Dotson, Wayne Pullen, Frank Almanza, Chris Robinson, Ruben Batista, Sal Butera, James Woods, Butch Barba, Mark Barba, Catfish, and Hawaiian Jimmy. All that became somebody's the tough way, getting their ass kicked. Wagering big and small, no participation trophies here. You win, you lose. You get over it. Where are the kid and teenager future pro players going to go? Where is there another monthly tournament drawing over 90 plus players? One that had been doing so for over 30 years. Huge yearly purse tournaments that attracted the best players from all over the world year in and year out. Where else? The tournaments were tough. Local champions went to hard times to lose. Why? Because being the best in town or county or even state was not good enough. Not special. For the big tournaments, you had to beat Efren Reyes, Francisco Bustamante, Keith McCready, Nick Varner, Mike Siegel, Mika Immonen, Alex Bagulian, Earl Strickland, Buddy Hall, Dennis Urcolo, and Shane Von Boning. In other words, the best in the world. Even the weekly tournament would draw four to five pros or more on average. For close to no money, you had to beat the likes of Ernesto Dominguez, Mauro Paez, Fernando King Kong, and Jose Parica. Where else can you go upstairs and have your cue worked on or made by little all? These are sad times for billiards. Hard times was a magical place for the hardcore billiard player. And I'm angry. Maybe I'm a dinosaur of the past. I don't love easy tiny tables. And I love playing for money. Still, it feels like little by little, the heart of American billiards is being replaced by easy, small tables and handicapped league systems. Finding a money game is harder and harder. I don't dislike leagues, but to me... Pool shouldn't be easy or safe. I like my pool serious. And we just lost another temple of pool. To quote the great Barbara Lee, pool is not dead. Yes, you're right, Barbara. Pool is not dead. But you know what? We're down. And it hurts. It really does hurt. The Billiard News.